I'm a bit confused sometimes when it comes to coaching. There are always the one or two people out there who uh, say they don't need coaching or what makes it even worse, that they are uncoachable. Is that a fair comment, that there are some people out there that are uncoachable? Yeah, and but possibly because of the time and context, uh, that there are people that in particular parts of their organisational life, really in terms of being productive there and then and, and being more engaged and happier, it's unlikely that they would will be shifted, if you like, or want to shift. Mm. So that does become a performance management issue. If you're a leader and coaching someone that's stuck and that you've tried every aspect of motivation and helping to coach them, and then the, the best approach is to use performance management uh, mm. approaches to help them to move into a better place. And if that's done with a coaching mindset and a coaching uh, philosophy and approach, then often uh, the bruising and the, the uh, damage that's done in organisations with people that are inappropriately performance managed is avoided. Mm. So I think that would be the best. I think when I've been, um, when I've been exposed to any coaching, and, and there are a lot of models out there we can use, a lot of the, the models that are uh, using the coaching format to be more question based. So, you know, what is the goal that you want to achieve and, you know, where are we right now? Where are we at? Here are some of the options that we got and what's the way forward? So there's a lot of questions that we would ask. I think sometimes what I'm, I'm looking for, do you think that there's maybe uh, an integration between the two where you can not only have the questions but have coaches give more feedback? Do you think that the two will actually intersect in some way where not only questions are asked but the coach provides a lot of good quality feedback? Yeah, uh, I think it's an integral part of coaching uh, that you are, and I think the, the, the difference is that rather than me judging you as a leader, as much as possible, I'll observe your behaviour and then ask questions about what your understanding of the impact of that behaviour is. Mm. So I'm providing some observational feedback, which may be through a 360, mm -hmm. it may be through my own observation, or as a leader, if I'm hearing from other people, that there's been some feedback, positive or negative, about your behaviour, to be able to give that in a non-judgmental, observational way and observe. For example, I've noticed, uh, Gerald, that when you do these, that people tend to leave the room. I'm wondering how you see that in your television <laughs> interviews and mm. then leave it to you to make that judgment about your skill and what you <laughs> might do about it. <laughs> so, I'm loving yeah. the way that you're putting, your, you're structuring that together. That's, that's fantastic. Only two have left so far. So, and, <laughs> but that, that's what I'm, that's what I think uh, the, the question was more about is that uh, it is a lot question based. So even giving that, what you've given me some feedback because you've observed something and you're being very um, objective with your your feedback, and then you throw on top of that a question and, and then ask me, you know, why has that happened? Why do you think the impact of that has happened? Um, what if I'm that uncoachable person and I go, I don't know, that's their problem, isn't it? Not mine. Well, I think that's when we move into, if that's a repeated conversation, it may be to do with our relationship, it may be to do with all sorts of things. Mm. But through time, if we explore the fact that you are stuck, then mm. clearly, uh, eventually, that becomes a performance management issue if we can't find some ways for you to engage in the role that you have. <laughs>